my background way before I got into magic was, uh, was nursing. Uh, my mother was a nurse uh, and I kind of followed in her footsteps and I went into, uh, into nursing, I, I did psychiatry, I went into general nursing and I even worked in, in the theatres, uh, um, as something called an ODP which is like an anaesthetics assistant. Um, and I learned an awful lot about human behaviour and human nature during that time. And one of the skills that I particularly uh, was interested in was, was how to break through to somebody's personal uh, space, you know, how to get inside somebody's personal space. As a nurse, that was vital because, you know, I had to deal physically with people who were very anxious, you know, sometimes incredibly scared because of the, uh, the, the physical condition that they were in. Uh, you know, I had to deal with angry relatives who couldn't necessarily understand the system. There was a lot of anxiety, a lot of pain, and a lot of anger, and therefore a lot of focus. And I had to, I had to learn how to, how to break through those barriers. You know, walking into a room and meeting somebody who didn't like to be touched, who was very anxious and nervous. But part of my job was that I had to physically interact. You know, I might have to, you know, uh, take blood pressure. You know, check various observations uh, about you know the breathing and, and uh, their blood pressure and, and their heart rate and their temperature uh, but I also might have to take blood and, and do other sort of slightly more invasive things and that was really difficult if the person kind of felt uncomfortable being touched. Uh, if you add to that any sort of um, you know, mental deterioration working with old people and you'd walk into a room and you'd have somebody who would become kind of really aggressive if you came too close. So I had to start to learn and develop skills and techniques that would allow me to get inside somebody's personal space without them necessarily being aware. Uh, and one of the first things I realized was it was all about their focus. And just like I've talked about this idea of where I look, you look. If I'm looking at you, you're looking at me. You know, this I become your focus. And if I'm your focus, you're aware of you know, what I'm saying, where I'm looking, what I'm doing, how close to you I am. But the moment I shift our joint focus to something else, I'm no longer in your focus. You know, you're now looking at this with me. You're no longer thinking about me, where I am in relationship to you. So I used to, um, it, it, the, the way the hospital where I worked was set up, we, we would have side rooms as well as the main ward area. So we'd have private rooms. And unfortunately, as you came through the door, you were looking directly at the patient sat down in a chair between a wall and their bed, like a little corridor coming down, which meant as you approached them, you kind of had eye contact. It was impossible not to. So within a few feet, they would become hyper aware of your presence of how close you were. And for a lot of these people with anxiety, they didn't like that. You know, they would become aggressive, sometimes particularly violent. So how do you deal with that? How do you break into that space? Now, this is way before I got into magic and, and understood any of these techniques. But I realized that if I gave them something else to focus on, if I took myself out of a threatening position in their mind, I could break into that gap. I could join them in their space without them knowing. And one of the simple techniques that I would use is I would, I would talk about something underneath the seat where they were sat. You know, I'd walk into the room. I, I wouldn't act as if I was one of the nursing staff to come and do something. It would be much more casual. I wouldn't have eye contact. I would be fixated on something else and it might be you know the plug socket and as I walked in I would say you know excuse me Mr. Giles I've just got to get under your chair and, and, and get something uh, you know get something from the plug or I've got to change a plug or add a wire but I would have a very uh, very defined reason to be there uh, and I would have a purpose which drew his attention away from me to the thing uh, that I wanted and in this case it might be something under his own chair so rather than feeling uh, nervous about my presence, he would immediately be drawn and interested in whatever it was I was looking at. You know, it might be to fix the bed or to change something.
but it would be done very relaxed, very confidently. I wouldn't have eye contact because I understand how, uh, how oppressive that can be for some people, how nerve-wracking, you know, fixed eye contact as I stare down the lens into your eyes. It is uncomfortable, but you know, when we talk to people, we don't lock eyes, we, we, you know, we look away, we, we break eye contact. And if we focus on something else and draw their attention to it, I learned that I could come into your space, that I could do so without you being aware of it, without you being uncomfortable. If I could make you uh, break physical contact with me, so again, in, in this context of being a nurse, as I, you know, as I bent down onto the floor to do something, you know, made up something, of course, I simply lift my hand up and I would, without looking, I would say, oh, could you give me a hand up? Which meant that they would grab hold of me. They would take my hand. It would happen suddenly without them having to think about it, but they've touched me. They've broken down the barrier of physical interaction. And in their mind, they are saying, it's okay. You and I can have contact with each other. They don't have to think about it or rationalize it. It's just something that they accept as okay. So in the, think about this in the context of pickpocketing. These skills, and I'm going to demonstrate them to you and explain them in more detail, these skills will allow you to physically interact, to come into somebody's personal space without them being over aware of it without them being oversensitive about it. It will allow you to break down the physical barriers of, of, of touch so that the person feels like they've invited you into their space. They've touched you rather than you touching them. Okay? It's a really good technique. It's all about proximity. It's about eye contact. It's about their, you know, where you focus their attention and where you focus your attention. So let me demonstrate this to you now. Uh, it will make a lot more sense when you see it in action. And then we will put it into the context of a simple steal. Okay, so let's think about this idea of proximity, uh, the way that people behave when you are near them. So remember we've talked about where the eyes are, so where we are focused and where they are focused. So if we were to start off by looking face to face to each other, then all of my focus is drawing him to me. I am the only thing of interest to him. So he is acutely aware of how close I'm getting. So, you know, I'm outside of his personal space, but very quickly he becomes aware of how close I am to him. And you get that kind of natural sort of pulling back tendency. Because I'm the only thing that he's interested in. I'm the only focus that he has. Now, for me to get close to him without him pulling back or without him being particularly aware, the only thing that I can do is simply break eye contact and give him something else to focus on. And that something can be an instruction or, you know, particularly something to look at. So if I break eye contact and come in and give him something to focus on, then naturally this is now where his interest lies. I become... Uh, you know, I'm outside of his interest and therefore in that grey area that we talked about, you know, outside of his focus, outside of his mental uh, sort of range and proximity. So as long as I give him something to look at, to focus, and it can be something I'm holding, it can be asking him about something of his. So if I were to ask the question, do you have anything in your pocket, then naturally he looks down, he's thinking about that. All right. So I can be very close to him without him having that awareness of where I am. The mistake that a lot of us make is that we try and come straight in from here to do things and then we wonder why the person backs away or becomes very, you know, whoa, what are you doing? All right. However, simply from here, if I break my eye contact and give him something to focus on, he's going to look in that direction, he's going to be less aware of where I am and therefore I can begin to play in this grey space. If for any reason I want his attention to come back to me, the easiest thing to do is regain eye contact. So I could, from a distance, get his focus, say, to his pocket as I come in and say, you know, what do you have inside here? And as my hand comes in, if I want him to look back at me, I simply have to bring my attention up and he sees how close I am and he naturally starts to pull back. This is now back into the grey area. It is outside of his attention because suddenly his attention has snapped up to me. Okay, so in all the things that we're doing, it's almost like a dance that you're playing. You know, from a distance, we can have 
communication, we can chat, but if I want to come in to do anything, I need to break eye contact, and also ideally I need to come alongside him. You know, this, this whole idea of, um, uh, I think it's uh, to, you know, to do with counselling, this idea of, I think it's a Greek word parakletos, the idea to come alongside, to be in parallel with. Uh, and it's, it's a very disarming thing. You can stand next to somebody on a, on a train, on, you know, on a tube, uh, you know, in, a, in a queue for something, and you don't really feel that you're very close. But if you've ever tried to have a conversation face to face, it's really unnerving, it's very uncomfortable, and people tend to want to pull back. You know, we've all met that, that person that, that, you know, tries to talk to you like this. And it's horrible. He's like, you know, just leave me alone. So we need to bear that in mind when we're working with people. If you want to come in close to them, you can, from a distance, you can chat, you can shake hands, you can ask questions. But to come into their space, you need to break eye contact and you need to give them something to focus on, something to look at, you know, hold your hand up, have a look at something here, you know, have a look inside your jacket, you know, what do you have down here? This allows me to be very close, but also it allows me to be tactile because his awareness isn't on me touching, it's on where his attention is being directed to, okay? Um, similar, similarly, which I can't say, as well as, very similar to, uh, <laughs> in, a, in a similar sense, uh, if I want to, um, uh, to take something from him, I again want to be utilizing this dark space that we create. I mean, and I don't even need to shift his attention far. You know, if I wanted to take something from a top pocket here, I wouldn't necessarily have to do anything else other than direct his attention to the inside jacket. That would be enough of a grey area to come nice and close. The, the only other thing I would mention about this is that there are people out there who are very sensitive to physical contact. But that sensitivity is still based on their perception of how close you are, the perception of proximity and their, uh, their allowance of that contact. Now, I, I, I draw on my experience as a nurse for all of this. And I know that if I come up to somebody and sort of say, oh, do you mind if I, you know, if I take your arm or you know, do you mind if I take your blood pressure? Somebody who doesn't like being touched will automatically be on guard. You know, well, actually, no, I don't like being touched. Leave me alone. However, if I give them some distraction, uh, you know, to ask them to pass me something or to do something that takes their attention away from me, in that, in that little moment where they're distracted, you know, I can simply say, oh, thank you very much indeed. And as long as there's no eye contact, he will take my hand. And if I come up to him like this and go, hi, how you doing? He'll, he'll shake my hand. But if he doesn't like being touched, he'll do, he, he won't take my hand or he'll say no or he'll back away. But if I come up to him and just do this, he'll take my hand without thinking because I'm no longer a threat. But in his mind, he's, he's touched me, not the other way around. So therefore, he's more willing to allow, from here on in, physical contact can take place. And he's less aware, unless I get eye contact again, and then he suddenly pulls away and becomes aware of how close I am. And these are great tools to have in mind when it comes to uh, dealing with people, when it comes to misdirecting their attention or focusing their attention somewhere else. If you want to get nice and close, break eye contact, create something to focus on. Ask them a question, get them to do something. Uh, and we're going to be using these techniques, we're going to be bringing these, te these ideas together to demonstrate particular methods of stealing from trouser pockets, outside, inside jacket pockets. Pretty much everything that we're going to do relies on this ability to sort of dance in and out of their space and to not control where their attention is, but to at least filter their attention away from or more accurately towards something else, whether it be a detail that I'm asking them to look at or um, a question I'm asking them, you know, do you, you know, what do you have in your pocket? Do you have anything down here? All of these things are pulling their attention, not just from a physical flow of attention because I'm directing his movement with my entire body but also with the words that I'm using and the fact that I choose to look. If I simply stand here and look he may look in his pocket. He's more likely to if I use my entire body to signal this is our interest. You know I'm bringing him down to look inside here. I then 
turn this to the focus and everything else is now out of focus. It's blurred, it's gray, it's not where his attention lies. All right, so um, thank you very much indeed and uh, we're gonna move on and talk about some other things.